Hello, everybody, from Cessna Stadium on the campus of Wichita State University. It is the regular season finale for Wichita State track and field, the Senior Open, a day of pomp and circumstance and competition, too, a day to say goodbye as Wichita State honors its senior class of track and field athletes. I'm Leon Liebel, along with WSU junior track and field athlete, Daisha Bullocks. It's great to have you and be with you up here, Daisha, on a overcast but a really nice day for track and field and as I mentioned it's a, it's a special day to, to say goodbye in honor of the seniors. Yes thank you for having me yes um, we do this meet every year and it's super special for all the seniors to just go out there and be recognized. Some of them are competing in their last track meets or getting ready for a conference so it's really exciting for them. As a, as a teammate what's it mean for you too to say goodbye it's kind of a bittersweet day too. I know you still have more competitions that come up but this is kind of makes it the form, you know, formalizing the, the goodbyes. Uh, it's kind of sad, yeah. <laughs> like, I have a lot of seniors that I'm definitely going to miss. We have a lot of leaders on the team that are seniors, so just kind of missing that leadership next year and just missing them at practice and at competition is definitely going to be hard. And as we take a, a look around the stadium, as you see, the field events have been going on this afternoon here at Cessna Stadium with the pole vault, and, and we just saw the uh, shot put, and, of course, uh, there are a lot of parents here, too, the seniors, as they'll be honored, and we'll talk to a lot of them throughout the evening here as we bring you the action through the evening of the Senior Open here, which or the Shocker Open here at Wichita State, which is the Senior Open as well. And uh, we will have the uh, running events tonight, starting with the 100-meter hurdles, men and women, as we take a, a, another look at the pole vault. We will check out that schedule coming up here. Again, it's uh, an overcast evening. Here's the schedule. We have, uh, starting at 5 o'clock, the, the official senior recognition. John Weiss, assistant track and field coach here at Wichita State, will do the honors down on the track before that. And then uh, around 520, we'll have the 100-meter hurdles, as you see, as we'll start. And, again, a lot of pomp and circumstance, as I mentioned, as a ceremonial day, as uh, Official photographs being taken. Woo Shock is here. That's always a big deal. It's been a pretty good year for Wichita State track and field. Daisha, how are, of course, you're a, a middle distance runner, and uh, how's, how have things been going for you? Uh, it's been going pretty well. Um, I just am getting back from a knee surgery last year, so this year has had its ups and downs, but our main focus for me is conference next Again, week. Just getting ready to go and help the team score as many points, contribute to the 400 and the 4x4, four four, and then contribute my enthusiasm for all the other teammates. And again, we do have plenty of competition tonight as we take another look there at the pole vault on the far side here at Cessna Stadium. But this is certainly a prelude to what's uh, coming next weekend, a big weekend. There's Steve Rainbolt, the director of track and field, head coach in the black hat. Has done a terrific job in his 19th season here at Wichita State. But, of course, next week, Wichita State is going to be hosting the American Athletic Conference meet. And that it has to be an exciting opportunity, I, I would assume, for Wichita State, its athletes and coaches. And uh, especially, of course, Daisy, you're from, you're from Texas, Houston, one of the top track and field programs in the country is coming here. But just talk about what that uh, kind of means for Wichita State hosting that. Um, I am super excited mm -hmm. for us to be hosting. Um, my very first conference championship that I won here was my freshman year at Cessna Stadium. The atmosphere is like none other for conference. Everybody is super excited, pumped. The stands are always pretty filled. Like it's just we're on our home track. Another look at the pole vaults. Who we have here? Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson, my old broadcast partner from the uh, KT Woodman Classic. He was up here all day with us on the final day. And uh, we talked a lot about competing. We talked about the pole vault, and it was kind of fun now to watch him actually do it. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting to see him after broadcasting. He was up here with a hat and glasses on. It was like Clark Kent up here. Now it's Superman down there <laughs> doing, the tr doing it. Outstanding uh, decathlete from Tonganoxie, Kansas. Once again, we're getting ready to honor some more to non-competing seniors uh, today as we'll head down to the track here shortly. Coach John Weiss will do the honors. 
Again, there's 18 seniors, nine men, nine women. Once again, this is the season finale, regular season finale for Wichita State track and field. The Shocker Open. And a chance to, to honor the outgoing seniors as well as uh, some competition. In the finish line area, I'd like to honor some of our seniors that are not competing in tonight's events. Let's go down to the track for John Weiss, where he'll honor some seniors. He's a two-time conference champion and three times all-conference. Three times she has qualified for the NCAA West Prelims and is an all-academic AAC athlete. She has PRs of 8.97 in the 60 hurdles, 14.63 in the 100 hurdles, and the shocker school record in the javelin at 164.11. Once again from Cheney, Kansas, this is Carly Miles. Our next senior is a distance runner, which is part of the distance medley relay that placed fifth in 2017. It is also an all academic AAC athlete. Her PRs include 1020 in the 3000 meters, 1852 in the 5K, and recently 1129 in the 3000 meter steeplechase. From Algona, Iowa, Tangi Wiseman. Our next senior is part of the indoor conference champion distance medley relay that ran the third fastest time in school history, as well as the 4x4 that indoors ran the second best time in school history. Two times she has been all conference and scored four times overall, has PRs of 57.29 in the 400, 139 in the 600, which ranks ninth in school history. 64-21 in the 400 hurdles, and 17 one and a half in the long jump. From both Los Angeles and Kansas City, this is Trudy Martin. Our next senior has been all conference, is ranked number two in the four by 100 meter relay and that relay qualified for the NCAA West prelims a couple years ago. She scored four times in conference competition and is an all-academic AAC member. Her time of 764 in the 60 meters ranks 10th all-time in school history. She's run 1177 in the 100, 2479 in the 200, and has a long jump best of 18, nine and a quarter. From Topeka, Kansas, Rayana Maples. Our next senior is a first team All-American. Two times he's a conference champion. Three times he's been all-conference. A three-time NCAA West qualifier. Placed sixth in the USA Championships last year in the Javelin. He's also a USTF CCCA All-Academic member, as, as well as a member of the MVC Commissioners of Excellence Award. His javelin throw of 254.3 is the all-time Wichita State school record. From Leroy, Kansas, Aaron True. Our next senior finished 12th in the MVC Cross Country Championships in 2016. Has finished 11th twice in the 5K at conference competition and is an all-academic AAC athlete. Has PRs of 836 in the 3K, 1447 in the 5K, and 3042 in the 10K, which ranks 12th in school history. From Ellenwood, Kansas, Pedro Montoya. Our next senior is on the number seven all-time ranked DMR. He's two times all-conference, has scored six times in conference meet competition, had a best in cross country of 19th in 2016, 
and he's an all-academic AAC athlete. His PRs include 351 in the 1500, 406 in the mile, which ranks seventh in school history, 818, which ranks eighth indoors in the 3K, 1448 in the 5K, and 911 in the 3,000 meter steeplechase. From Olathe, Kansas, Nathan Wickerin. And we have one athlete that is sick tonight, so getting his award will be our jumps coach, Heidi Benton. Our next senior ranks second in school history in the 4x1 and is also an All-American, six-time conference champion, 13 times all-conference, four times is qualified for the NCAA West prelims. He's an all-academic AAC athlete and has been a Midwest Region Field Event Athlete of the Year. His long jump PR of 25, nine and a half is the school record indoors, ranks fourth outdoors. His triple jump of 52, six and a half is the second best in school history. From Leavenworth, Kansas, Jared Bellardo. Once again, let's give all of our seniors a round of applause. We will still have a few more to honor throughout the rest of the evening. And that's John Weiss, again, assistant track and field coach, doing the honors, honoring the uh, non-competing athletes on this sh the Shocker Open. Seniors uh, going out again, Carly, Carly Miles, Tandy Wiseman, Trudy Martin, Rihanna Maples, Aaron True, Pedro Montoya, and Nathan Wickerin. And uh, some outstanding athletes, as we heard their credentials. And, uh, again, uh, receiving uh, a nice the gift, flowers, and uh, a gift basket on their way out. The but, uh, again, plenty of competition Once still to come your way. As we will have the women's 100 hurdles coming up here shortly in about, in about, eight oh, eight about eight minutes away from that. And while we are waiting for the start of that, let's take a break. We'll be back with more from Cessna Stadium right after this. And back at Cessna Stadium, Leon Liebel along with Dacia Bolox as we bring you the Shocker Open here at uh, Wichita State University, the last regular season track and field meets for the Shockers. And again, it's a chance to really honor the outgoing senior class, 18 seniors, nine men and nine women. Honored tonight as uh, the competition continues as a uh, kind of a prelude to next week's conference track and field meet, which will also be here at Cessna Stadium. Again, the field events continue. They've been continuing all afternoon, and we're going to take a look at some of the uh, competition that's been going on. And uh, starting, I believe, yes, the hammer throw. As uh, here we go with, and that was a throw by Cassidy. And uh, we'll. We watch the, uh, there she is. So, so we'll see the results here coming up as well. Men and women, hammer throw. Didn't seem like she was too pleased with that, just a reaction, but 
I have learned that uh, a lot of track and field athletes, they are very much perfectionist. <laughs> very much so. <laughs> what we just saw there was Alex Adams throwing. Okay, that was Alex, and we'll see the results, and there it is. And uh, Cassidy Androff in second, uh, Alexandra Adams. Okay, and go to the men now. And is that, that's our man, uh, Skylar Arneson, I believe, isn't it? Who wears the kilt. That's why I knew his name. He's also going to be one of our reporters throughout the evening. That is his trademark. This right here is um, a graduate assistant for us, Dylan Grove. Dylan Grove, the hammer throw. Again, the hammer throw, if you watch high school track and field a lot in Kansas, we don't see this event. This is... Something we see in the college level, obviously. As we see another toss on the men's side. A lot of strength and balance as all the throwing events are. Skylar Arneson, there's the top of your list. With a 198-11 uh, as we see the metric and the English. Isaiah Evans, second place. The finals, Corey Martins, Michael Bryan, Aiden Camp, and Dylan Grove. And we're back now to some live action across the way. And the pole vaulting continues uh, warming up over there. We are getting ready for more running events, uh, which we'll be covering here in a second or a few minutes. The women's 100 hurdles followed by the men's 110 so there we see the uh, ladies getting ready for the hurdles. Again, it's all mostly all Wichita State athletes here at the Shocker Open. Take a look at the shot put now too, going on over here on the southwest corner of the Cessna Stadium. In the uh, women's 100 meter hurdles we're talking about coming up, we'll have uh, scheduled to compete. Claudia Rojo, Amaya Anoma, Sydney Wilson, Sarah Hines, Kirsten Hewitt, Maria Romero, Kendra Henry, and Jalen Milligan. All those, uh, except for Kirsten Hewitt, she's from uh, the Team Hendrix. Everyone else, Wichita State Shockers. We are about ready. Claudia Rojo, one of the outstanding athletes here at Wichita State, comes in with the best time at 14.26. She'll be in lane one. Uh, again, they're announcing the lineup, which we just did. But uh, so Claudia will be in lane four. So Claudia Rojo again with the best uh, time coming into this, and uh, in lane four. I mean, she's third from uh, the right there on your screen. Daisha, you have run the hurdles before. It's not your... The 400 hurdles. <laughs> Definitely you, not there. I'm always impressed by this event. I, I think I mean, the speed, the balance, the timing, a lot goes into it. A bit of danger even. Absolutely. Do like, you like it? Um, 400 hurdles are a little bit better for me, but I do give props to the 100 hurdlers because it's simply off of tempo and everybody, every step counts. And it looks like in lane six, we have a senior Sarah Hines running the 100 hurdles. Her final race before conference. We have seven athletes, I believe. Yes, seven running. Yes, we had eight scheduled, but 
Once again, Claudia Rojo in lane four. Sarah Hines. And they're off, and here they come right at us. Again, Claudia Rojo, third from the right. She is in the lead, but it's close as they come down this final stretch. Rojo now stretching it out as she has two more hurdles to go, and it will be Claudia Rojo crossing the finish line first as there she is. And then her teammate, Sydney Wilson, coming in second in lane three. Sydney Wilson, let's see what the final uh, results and times are. Wow. 1422. I believe is a personal best for her right now. Sydney Wilson second, and again Hewitt from Hendricks. Kirsten Hewitt came in third. Claudia Rojo, we saw her uh, a few weeks ago. Well, the uh, of course the. KT Woodman and uh, earlier action here at Cessna Stadium, outstanding athlete. And uh, we're going to go down to the field to hear from some of our athletes. And uh, let's go down. Jenny Pinkston has more. Hi. Hi. I'm here with Carly Miles. Carly, what's your favorite part about being a shocker athlete? Um, I just really enjoy being on a team with a bunch of studs that are always succeeding. <laughs> um, it's fun to compete, but I love competing alongside people who are such good athletes um, and being a part of something that's bigger than myself. What are your plans after graduation? So I actually have a job in Florida, so I'll be moving there in a month. I'll be oh, a month. strength and conditioning coach um, at IMG Academy. Sounds good. All right, back to you. All right, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny Pinkston, doing some reporting for us down on the field, Wichita State track and field athlete. And again, interviewing senior Carly Miles from Cheney, Kansas. Sounds like she has a bright future already in store. And Carly's had an outstanding career here at Wichita State. Three-time NCAA qualifier, three-time all-conference, two-time a conference champion. And she's a school record holder. There's a good look at her in action. Comes from an outstanding high school track and field program at nearby Cheney. Always well represented at the state track and field meet, which will be here at Cessna Stadium later this month, the final weekend of May, or the Memorial Weekend of May, I should say, Memorial Day weekend. So we're getting ready now for the 110-meter hurdles. That will be the men as they raise those hurdles a few inches and uh, also run a little further along the way. And I'm always interested, I've, I've talked to Coach Steve Rainbolt about this base a lot. There's a, you come from a larger area, mm -hmm. Texas, but there's a lot of small town Kansas kids that come here to compete in track and field. They do very well. And how, how is that meeting kids from Kansas when you come here? At least something from Sterling, Kansas, which has like, I think her graduating class was like, 10 or 15 <laughs> as compared to mine was almost 400 so it's pretty good to kind of see where people come from like the cultures they have some of their traditions and just being able to meet other people kansas i will say has some really good track athletes well it's always i, I love the uh fact that well during the kt woodman we have the the pre-state for the high school kids that come here to Cessna Stadium. And I always enjoy that the fact that all classes get to compete against each other. And, I, and I've said this a million times, but no matter how big your school is, if you're a, if if you're you're a fast, good runner, you yeah, can run. You're fast, you're fast. The times don't lie. And mm -hmm. if you can jump, you can jump. So that, that's always fun to watch. And I, I really have always thought the, the backbone of this program, those have been some of the small town athletes that come from, from the state of Kansas. And Absolutely. Fun to watch. Now, I always got to ask, too, how did you end up at Wichita State? They recruited you, or did you know much about the Shockers? Or? Well, at first, I've never heard of Wichita State. I've never heard of Wichita State before in my entire life. But like I was saying <laughs> earlier, um, one of my closest friends, Deja Young, she went here, and they were recruiting me. And so I came on a visit, and I just kind of fell in love with this place. 
Hey, you know, we saw Skylar Arneson a little while ago in the kilt down there throwing the hammer. He's also a reporter for us. Let's go down to Skylar. Hi there. Well, I'm here with Kelsey Slauson. Kelsey, conference time is always an exciting time, but this is your last one at Wichita State. It's a home meet for you. How does that make you feel? Uh, I'm excited to have the home court advantage, and hopefully it goes well and we all compete well. Very good. And, of course, uh, what is your favorite moment while at Wichita State? Uh, my favorite moment while at Wichita State was my first shot put throw at 50 feet because then my dad had to buy me Ralph, my pug. <laughs> well, that's always a good way to do it. All right, back to you guys. All right, Skylar, that's a great story. How about that for some motivation? You get a puppy if you, if you do well. Kelsey Slauson from Paola, Kansas. Another outstanding athlete, another outstanding senior for Wichita State. Absolutely, that's my girl right there. She shows like so much leadership within this program and she works extremely hard every day and she just puts a smile on my face. She's the joy of my life. Okay, with that, as we get ready again for the men's 110 meter hurdles, we're gonna take a break. We'll be back with more from Cessna Stadium at Wichita State right after this. On this episode. And back at Cessna Stadium on an overcast Friday evening here at Wichita State. I'm Leon Liebel, along with Daisha Bullocks as we bring you Wichita State track and field, the regular season finale, the Shocker Open, saying goodbye to the seniors here at Wichita State as we get ready for another running event, the 110 meter hurdles, the men's side. And uh, we just saw the women a little while ago. Claudia Rojo won that event. And so we get lined up and ready to go. And again, mostly all Wichita State athletes. Uh, if they're not, they're affiliated with Wichita State. And let's run down the schedule of competitors. We've got Joseph Holthusen, outstanding freshman athlete, Wichita State. We saw him do some great things at the uh, KT Woodman Classic a few weeks ago. Young man out of Bishop Carroll. Ben Johnson, the decathlete, he'll be running. He has the second best time coming into this. As Holt Hughes him with the best uh, time at 14.23. Ben Johnson, 14.42. And we have Tyler Knight of the Shocker Track Club. Grant Downs, Wichita State. Clay Eckert, running unattached, but uh, from Wichita State. Lucas Schaefer. Davis Dubert. And Connor Ludoff. As we take a look. So they're all lined up and ready to go. Holt Hughes again with the top time. We'll be in lane four, and right next to him is Ben Johnson. They're coming right at you, right down the middle there. Is Holt Hughes in the uh, fourth from the right, and then Ben Johnson on his right side. Look at those two guys going down the stretch. Joseph Holt Hughes is an interesting young man. Again, a freshman who was an outstanding football player, Bishop Carroll, but the times I've watched him now compete here, I, I saw him compete uh, last year at the state track and field. He always has a smile on his face. <laughs> he is and will forever be an underdog. He has that fight every single day at practice. I've never met an athlete who PRs every track meet. And this entire season, he's literally PR'd at every meet. He's super, he works so hard, and he's just always down to the detail, trying to get better every single day. That's a good look at uh, Joseph there. As, uh, again, he had the smile going, plotting his uh, fellow competitors and teammates as they get loose. Get ready for this 110-meter uh, hurdles. And they are set. They'll be coming right at us. Again, ben Johnson in lane five and Holt Hughes in lane four. On 
an overcast, kind of a muggy Friday afternoon. Not as cold as it looks, and here they come. Holt Hewson out to the early lead. Ben Johnson, though, trying to catch him. Johnson, Holt Hewson. Holt Hewson holding the lead. Two more hurdles to go. Final hurdle, and then Ben Johnson knocked his down, and Holt Hewson edges him at the finish line as both smiling their way across the finish. 14-42, I believe. There we go. There's Joseph Holt Hughes at 14.42. And uh, Ben Johnson, second. Ludoff running unattached, but 15.09. Downs, Knight, Davis Dubert. And we'll take a replay look. Here, what do we see? Looks like they're battling head to head at each hurdle. Just going after it, trying to get to the finish line first. Ooh, fin Ooh. final finish, literally. That was a little closer than it uh, looked in real time, actually. For sure. As, uh, again, Joseph holt and just edging Ben Johnson to win the 110-meter hurdles here at the Shocker Open at Cessna Stadium, Wichita State. And I believe we're going to have an interview down on the field with another senior, I believe. Let's go down, see who we're going to talk to here. It's going to be Jenny Pinkston doing the, doing the honors. Jenny. Is that a go? Oh, hi, I'm Jenny Pinkston, and I'm here with Rayanna Maples. She's from Topeka, hi. <laughs> what events do you do? I do short sprints and long jump. <laughs> um, what's your favorite track and field memory? I would say in 2017, winning both indoor and outdoor conference, and then going to first rounds for the four by one. And what's your favorite event? Um, I like them all, but I'd have to say long jump. All right, that was Rayanna Maples from Topeka. All right, Jenny, thank you so much. And again, Rihanna Maples, one of the seniors, 18 seniors, finishing out their career at Wichita State. She's uh, not competing, though, here in the Shocker Open as we have just wrapped up the uh, hurdles, men and women. Of course, the women, the hundreds, and then the men, the 110. And coming up next will be the men's 800 meters, I believe that's right. But anyway, let's, uh, let's take a break. We'll be back with more right after this. On this episode of In Focus, we highlight one human resources student who is working on her professional edge and is now passing her business skills on to local high school students. Plus, we take a look at the WSU Center for Real Estate, one of the premier sources for reliable data and expert analysis of real estate markets in Kansas. Check out the whole episode on YouTube. And back at Cessna Stadium at Wichita State, it is the Shocker Open, the final regular season track and field competition for the uh, Shockers. And again, a chance to uh, say goodbye to the senior class as we're getting ready for the 100 meters. And it's going to be the women first and then followed by the men as uh, we just wrapped up with the hurdles. So they've cleared the track or are clearing the track of the uh, hurdles. As uh, once again, the field events, they've been going on all afternoon and through the evening as we watch the pole vault across the way. Who we got there? Slade Little. Looks like he might have missed a bar so far. Hopefully he has more bars at that attempt to keep going in the competition. You're around all these fellow athletes and teammates, and you see the pole vault. We talked about this 
it's just I'm always amazed by the pole vault. It, it looks so difficult. And I know. I don't even know how scary. they can like, <laughs> Quite flip honestly. their bodies around in the air to get over the pole and then manage to throw the pole out. All right, I think we're going to go back down. We're going to hear from one of the outstanding senior athletes, not competing today, but, boy, what a great career he's had. Let's go down to Skyler. True. True, you've been here multiple times at conference. You're a multiple-time conference champion. You are an All-American. How does it feel to have conference be a home track meet for you one more time? Uh, it'll be pretty awesome. The last few meets I've competed here, I've competed pretty well. So I'm hoping to just have another good meet next week and just go out on a positive note. Sounds good, sir. Now, Coach Hetzendorf has his own unique style of coaching. Give me your best Dorf impersonation. Uh, I don't know if I have a good impersonation, but sometimes when you watch him watching us throw, he just always tries to throw with you. So it's just always entertaining to watch him. <laughs> he always makes it fun. Thank you, guys. Back to you. Thank you, Skyler. Again, Aaron True. Well, he has had an incredible career here. Young man from another small town athlete that's really been big time for the Wichita State Shockers. One of the top javelin throwers in the country. In the country. I believe he's like top three so far. And he's honestly such a nice person as well. He, Every time you see him walking from the cap, he'll always speak to you, ask you how your day is going, stuff like that. So just a little stuff like that really makes his personality shine. Well, I got to say, in my experience here doing some broadcasting for Wichita State Track and Field, not just saying this because I'm with a, an athlete, but <laughs> everybody is just very, very nice. It's mm -hmm. a, fun, a fun group of people to be around. Yeah, we just like to have fun, go hard at practice, and win championships. That's just kind of like <laughs> the goal here at Wichita State. <laughs> That's a good slogan to have. A little long, but it's, it, it works. Absolutely. All right, we're going to check out some of the discus uh, results and th toss uh, throwing. As, all right, we're going to see some video. That's good. And who we have here? Miss Kelsey yeah. Slauson. Again, we heard from Kelsey a little while ago, and she's – one of the outstanding throwers, of course, for Wichita State. Now it looks like we have Cassidy in the ring, ready to throw some discus. That, that seemed like a different release than we're used to seeing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. There we go. There's Kelsey Slauson uh, winning in the finals of a throw of 48 uh, 8 7. That's uh, 160 feet, 4 inches. Tyra Bickham in second. She's an alumni. She graduated ah. last year. Is that what old and broken means? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was curious about that. That's not very nice. All right, let's go to the men on the discus. Lefty. And there's our man, Skyler, reporter and discus thrower of the kilt. Look at those beautiful running faces. <laughs> and immediately both the smiles breaking out as they cross the finish line. Having a good time today at the Shocker Open here at Seston Stadium at Wichita State. So we get ready for next week, and the American Conference comes to Wichita. It should be a big-time event for Wichita State track and field. Some of the top athletes in the country will be competing. Understand uh, you know, some of the javelin competition is getting underway. In women's. Get the weather kind of overcast, but it's not as cold or cool as it looks. It's kind of humid and muggy out here as well. Yeah, it's definitely not your typical Wichita day. <laughs> Hopefully next week will be just perfect weather. We'll see. Here's more pole vaulting on the far side. Hmm. Looks like he just missed it. Coming up next will be the men's 100 meter. As they are getting uh, ready. Are we just going to have one competitor in this? I think there's multiple. Oh, here they come. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking down on the – I wasn't lo looking at the monitor there. He's putting on a good game poker face, though. <laughs> there's the second one. Looks like we have Austin Corley in lane three and Richard Stanifer in lane four. Yeah, 
And we can watch two at one. It's got pole vault. Oh, he just clipped the uh, bar there at the last second. And then the uh, javelin continues, the women's javelin. What do we have here throwing that? Looks like they're practicing right now. I didn't quite get the best visual. In the field events, they started earlier this afternoon, continuing through the evening. Now the uh, running events have gotten underway as we're getting ready for the men's 100 meters. And on the pole vault side, looks like we have Hayden Bunger getting ready to pole vault right now. He's always been super consistent, always placing the top three in, at all the conferences that I've at least competed in. There he goes. Nice, looks, he got it. Makes it look easy. Yes. Hayden Buckner. Again, you're watching the Shocker Open here at Cessna State in Wichita State. Leon Liebel along with Daisha Bullock, Wichita State Junior, Sprinter Extraordinaire. Oh, Middle thanks. distance. I like that extraordinaire <laughs> part. Well, of course. Makes me feel fancy. <laughs> Who we got here? We got Ben Johnson, Big Ben. Ah, Ben. Should have known that. Ooh. You know, as he, he was my broadcast partner again at the KT Woodman, and he uh, talked about guys looking or being a perfectionist. He was just never satisfied with any of his times, his never. events. Never. But that's what makes him so good. Oh, yeah. And I find I have a lot of uh, track and field athletes always looking to get better. Always I looking mean, to get that best time, that best jump. Absolutely. Anytime you can hit the perfect run or jump or throw, it just makes your time much better. Those uh, PRs are very important to you. Absolutely. Okay, I think it's going to be a two. Two-man race. Two-man race as I make sure I look down in real life. <laughs> And two Wichita State Shockers. Austin Corley and Richard Sandifer. Now Noah Smucker from uh, Kansas City track, uh, track Club, Smoke Track Club, was on the schedule but not out there. So it's just going to be Sandifer and Austin Corley. And then here they go. And just a little over 10 seconds. Austin Corley. Austin Corley with the victory. This is a fun event for him. He normally sticks to the 400, 200, 400 hurdles. Yeah, we'll see the uh, replay coming up here. Again, Austin Corley was on your right side of your screen. Kind of jumped out to the uh, early lead and then just kind of stretched his advantage midway through this race. Is it more difficult, less difficult, or does it even matter when you have, you're, you're just going one on one with somebody else? Uh, uh, would you like to have more competitors? I think, I think people would kind of like to have more competitors just to be able to be pushed a little bit more. I personally like to run against people who are faster than me because then. I know that I'll be able to push myself a little bit harder and just try to stay up there and then just try to finish at the end. I think it's kind of hard to, you know, run with just one person because it's like. And again, that is Austin Corley winning the uh, men's 100 meters over his teammate Richard Sandifer. We were talking uh, earlier in the day, a lot of people one well, of the buzz, big buzz in the world of track and field, the young man from Texas this week who set a 100-meter record, high school record, 998. <laughs> it was incredible to watch. I know. He's from, I believe he's from Houston, Texas. And I've we've been hearing a lot about him pretty much all season. And for him to break 10 seconds in high school is pretty spectacular. I think he had like some high wind. I think his wind was like 4'8", which is probably not legal in colleges, but for high school, I mean, I think that's a great job for him. It was amazing about that. The guys that finished second and third, their times were some of the best yeah. in the country. Mm -hmm. 
as now and we continue to watch some of the more of the field activity and the women's javelin taking off. Oh, timing not quite there. By the way, Matthew Bowling's young man that uh, broke that record as he 9.98 seconds earlier this uh, week. That video, as they say, went viral. It was everywhere. Absolutely. It was incredible. Pole vault continuing. And the women's javelin. So question, did you ever play any sports in high school? Yes, but not track and field. <laughs> <laughs> what did you play? Uh, basketball and baseball. Were you a point guard? Uh, not a point guard. Were you a? Uh, Shot the ball a lot and didn't play defense. Got, oh, <laughs> shooting guard, gotcha. That's cool. But uh, no, no track, no track and field. I've always uh, though had a, a huge respect though for the athletes in, the, in this. It's, they know it's difficult. Yeah, people always it's, ask it's me. It's not just the the difficult doing the events. It's the preparation. Yeah. Because it, it's you practice every day. People kind of a lonely like, existence sometimes. Yeah. I would assume. And mm -hmm. it was like, why do you like running so much? Why do you just run for fun? <laughs> I don't know. I just love it. And they always joke around. They're like, what do you guys do for punishment, run? We're like, yeah, <laughs> it's not a punishment. We just go running. Now, it is, it's been ex having the opportunity to do some of these broadcasts. And I am, again, just so impressed with the athletes and with the long-distance runners, too. I, uh, these amaze me. Absolutely. What goes on there. I have mad respect for people who do the steeplechase because they have to ah. run, and then they jump into water. Yeah, one of my favorite events to watch. I've mentioned that several times. It's Again, another event we don't get to see very often. Absolutely, because they only have it in college. Mm -hmm. In the state track and field, Kansas state track and field meet coming up in a few weeks as well here at Cessna Stadium. One of the largest sporting events in the state of Kansas every year. The entire state comes to Cessna Stadium as play Hayden Buckner again with the Oh, Hayden, another senior. He was honored earlier today. We saw the non-competing athletes honored, but each of the competing athletes there are, he gets uh, congratulated from Steve Rainbolt and his gift basket. Do we know what's in there? Um, I think it's a shirt and a really nice cup and a good handshake from well, Coach what a, Bolt. What a great picture. Midair. Celebrating almost, it looks like. Yeah. Wow, that's terrific. That is terrific. Hayden Bugner, everybody, from Andel, another outstanding track and field program in the state of Kansas. We're going to be back with more competition from Cessna Stadium right after this.
And welcome back to Cessna Stadium on this Friday evening on the campus of Wichita State. It's the Shocker Open, the regular season finale for Wichita State track and field as the Shockers close out the, the regular season, getting ready for next week's American Conference meet, which will be here as well at Wichita State. Some of the fans, family here on what is senior night as we honor the 18 seniors at Wichita State, their final season as Shockers. Plenty of competition, though, still to go. As we mentioned, the conference meet coming up next week. And uh, what's the anticipation been like? I know we talked about it a little earlier, but everybody getting a little more excited? Is it just a week away? Absolutely. I mean, this is what we've been training for all year is conference championship. And the fact that we get to have it at home just makes it a little bit better. We don't have to travel, which takes a little bit of the tiredness that comes with traveling and stuff like that. And we're home. We're literally up the street from our houses. So everybody's pumped. Like, I think a lot of the different sports will be in town, too. So they'll come and support us. And I know a lot of family members are coming from all over to just come watch this championship. And, I mean, the goal is to go home with two conference championships, kind of repeat what we did in 2017. That would be, like, the best-case scenario, of course. And then on to that is we just have um, – Regionals first rounds in Sacramento that we have a few people already qualified for. Again, Wichita State, the new kid on the block in the American Conference. Do you guys feel you have something to prove to these Absolutely. other programs? Like, hey, we're, we're here too? Absolutely. Um, I know for sure last year nobody even thought of us at all as a contender. They didn't probably even know who Wichita State was. But we really went on a, a campaign these last two years with the guys finishing second. Um, indoor and outdoor last year and then our cross our women's cross country team coming out with the victory and so now we're just trying to continue the momentum of indoor with a second place finish from men and a third place finish from women's and just to go out there and compete for a conference championship this year now that should be exciting as there's some of the uh, some great programs coming to wichita state to compete next week and here is the women's 400 meters and a couple of teammates from science and arts Roche Burrell and Conangela Senior against Science and Arts. 400 meters and uh, well, Daisha, this is your uh, this is your baby here. <laughs> yes, it looks like Burrell is coming off really. Looks like she had a really good um, start and now she's just kind of cruising in this back stretch so far. They look, both looking pretty good though, pretty even in the stagger as they're coming into the second turn. I hear a lot of people who do not compete in this talk about how difficult it looks. It, how difficult is it? It's pretty difficult. I think a lot of misconception or is it about you get it. Used to? Uh, yeah, you definitely get used to it. I always think it kind of goes by fast because once you look up, you're already kind of entering into the, the last phase of it. But it's just like almost an all out sprint. You just you get out strong, you try to cut through, and you just finish strong. And you just give it all you, all you got the last. 50 meters is really just heart and soul. And there's the finish. Again, the uh, two young ladies from Science and Arts running the 400 meters, and it was Conangela Senor. One, uh, one, five, four. They both look pretty even, though. It looks like they're coming in really strong, just kind of fighting through. The lactic acid that normally hits 400 runners around the 300 area, last 350. Now, what's that like? Oh, it's pretty tough. But, you know, the goal is to just try to get through lactic acid as, as far throughout the race and then just try and finish strong. Well, I think we're going to have another interview down on the field. I think we're going to hear from Sarah Hines, another Wichita State shocker. Let's go down to Jenny Pinkston. I'm here with Sarah Hines from Howard, Kansas, what's your favorite memory? My favorite memory is when Adam Mudge ate five cans of sardines and then threw him, threw him up after his 400 hurdle race. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> All right, Sarah, do you have any plans after graduation? Yeah, next spring I'm going to be applying to PTA school. Awesome. And Sarah runs the hurdles too, by the way. Thanks. Back to you. All right, thank you, Sarah Hines. As we saw her in the hurdles earlier in the 100 meters, another great uh, still picture of her, the uh, look on her face. But I got to ask, what's a Kansas sardine? 
that opposed to a regular sardine? No, I think she said like a can of sardines. Oh, can. Yeah, I think Sorry, it was I like just... four <laughs> cans of sardines. <laughs> wow. And who was the uh, young man that did that? Uh, Adam Mudge. Okay. He's a 400 hurdler as well. Okay, and, uh, well. I don't know. That didn't, that didn't sound like it ended well for Adam. Just, we it, didn't, it didn't sound like it tasted <laughs> it well either. I don't think I could eat just one, let alone a, a can. So. No, I could never. All right. More pole vaulting on the other side as that continues. Hayden Buckner again and uh, bailing out there. As we are now going to get ready for the men's 400 meters. Oh, yeah. Sight to see right here, ladies and gentlemen. And we have four competitors on the schedule. Adam Gazi, Jace Kopik. Marlon Herrera from Science and Arts, and Davis Dubert, also from Wichita State. So we got three Wichita State Shockers in this race. Dubert in lane six. Got another athlete, uh, all-around athlete, Davis Dubert, a guy I had the opportunity to broadcast a, a state basketball tournament. So oh, fun. He's from uh, St. John's Beloit, another small town. And, Won the 1A Division II state championship a few years ago. He was an outstanding basketball player. He definitely could have played uh, college ball somewhere. As we get ready for the 400-meter men. Young man from uh, Science and Arts there, Marlon Herrera. He's not using the blocks, I believe. Is that per just personal preference? I noticed uh -uh. that a couple weeks ago. Some guys, some ladies, men use it, some don't. Uh, I think it's better to use the blocks, <laughs> but I just want to point out how good everyone's looking right now. <laughs> Guzzi is really pushing it coming off the, coming into the second curve, had a great start. Him and Jace are coming out really strong. Adam Guzzi, Jace Kopik behind him. Looks like they just have 150 meters left to go. Coming around that final turn down the front straight. Looks like we're going to have a good finish here. They're looking really strong. Kopik Looks like takes Jace the lead. Coming up a little bit. Jace Kopik. And the goal is also to just be relaxed the last 50 meters. Jace Kopik finishes first as he takes the lead after that final turn. Spectacular race by both of them. I think they definitely. Is there, a good race. is there any pacing involved at all? I mean, this is just a sprint, right? Um, or, um, it just depends. Normally, for instance, if I have someone who's, like, significantly faster than me. Oh, okay, so now we're um, showing a replay of the last 100 meters with two Wichita State athletes, Jace Kopik and Adam Guzzi, coming down. Looks like they're about 50 meters left, just giving all they've got. Nice form coming in to the finish, looking pretty relaxed. And Kopik looked pretty comfortable there down that final stretch as we're going to see the finish here. Yeah, there it is. It's Jace Kopik with the win and uh, I believe a time of 48-3-3. There he is. Good. Good look at him. As that completes the men's 400 meters. That will lead into the 800 for the men and women coming up here shortly. Again, you're watching the Shocker Open at Cessna Stadium at Wichita State. We're going to be back with more track and field action right after this.
bigger than most sports are. On this episode of In Focus, we highlight one human resources student who is working on her professional edge and is now passing her business skills on to local high school students. Plus, we take a look at the WSU Center for Real Estate, one of the premier sources for reliable data and expert analysis of real estate markets in Kansas. Check out the whole episode on YouTube. And back at Cessna Stadium here on the beautiful campus on a beautiful Friday evening here at Wichita. It's a little overcast, but boy, everything is really green up here as we're in the month of May and spring. And that's Wonder where we are. Wonder if they can see us. <laughs> Leon Lebo along <laughs> with Daisha Bullock, who's trying to be seen on, uh, on TV. And uh, I still think it's not as cold as it might look, but there's somebody bundled up down on the field. And Looks like Margo bundled <laughs> up. <laughs> but... Uh, Again, the field events uh, continuing throughout the afternoon. I think we're going to check out some uh, results from the shot put, uh, women's shot put results. And how about that? Kelsey Slauson, probably no surprise. First place in the finals, 52 feet, 2 inches. And another shocker athlete, uh, Amanda. Kukulius. Thank you. <laughs> Sophomore shocker in second. And we'll check out the men's uh, shot put. Alec Garcia run, uh, competing unattached, 56-3. Uh, Corey Martins from Wichita State, a junior. He finishes second. And then Isaiah Evans, another one of the uh, 18 seniors. Wichita State honored here tonight. He finishes third. Christopher Ry Wise, uh, Giles Fox, Isaiah Hernandez, and Dylan Grove. Also today, the high jumps uh, events. And here we go. Sydney Wilson, sophomore from Wichita State. She wins. With a jump of five six five zero, oh, five six and a half, and uh, Shania Van Oster. Shania. Shania Van Oster should have known that. It's so like Shania Twain, Wichita State, another senior, in second place. And the men's high jump results: Mason Buckmaster, one of the, uh, he's been terrific. He was great. The uh, KT Woodman a few weeks ago. Six four seven five. Uh, Cole Conrad, a young man from Ashland, Kansas. Junior from Wichita State, Tucker Mora, and Chaner Aludoff in fourth place, competing unattached from Wichita State. Again, the Shocker Open here at Cessna Stadium. It's the, a little darker now as the, the lights are on. I feel like running at nighttime is the best environment to run. I learned that at other, like, states they they're tracking me to her like super early like 8 a.m but like for texas all of our track meets in high school even in middle school they all started at like 5 p.m so i feel like the best race to run in the dark like in the nighttime is the four by four and we're scheduled to have the 800 meters uh, beginning or are we Oh, we're going to go down to the field and uh, hear from another one of the outstanding Shocker seniors, Ben Johnson. Let's go down to Jenny Pinkston. I'm here with Ben Johnson, a decathlete from Toganoxie, Kansas. So, Ben, what is one of your favorite memories? Um, Multi-4x4s, four four for sure. Um, 
none of us are that good at it, but uh, we, <laughs> we have fun with it. Uh, I remember once I was running and I passed Kyle Troxler on the back stretch and I made a comment to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I'm running on the home stretch, he passes me and makes another comment back to me and I just started dying laughing and I could not breathe and I almost died crossing the finish line. It's always good not to breathe during a race, so that's Absolutely. good. Do you have any plans for after graduation? Uh, yeah, um, I've been working at Cessna the last four years and I'm doing this Textron leadership development program where they'll send me to uh, four different Textron owned companies for six months each. Um, my first rotation is in Thief River Falls, Minnesota at Arctic Cat, uh, so it's going to be cold. So, <laughs> especially because I bought a camper, I'm going to be living in a camper, so ugh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Ben. Thank Back you. to you guys. All right, Jenny, and thank you, Ben Johnson. There's a good look at Ben running the hurdles. Again, a terrific decathlete here at Wichita State. Young man from Tonganoxie, Kansas, and uh, he can do a little broadcasting, too. We had a great time with him at the KT Woodman. And he talked about that experience going up to Minnesota in the, where it's very cold, and uh, he'll be up there. I, I think he makes that trip next fall. He'll be there for about six months. I didn't know he bought a camper, though. He didn't, he didn't tell me that. And again, always kind of understating his performance. <laughs> <laughs> he does that a lot. As we are off and running now with the women's 800. And I believe this is uh, another couple of athletes from Science and Arts, which, by the way, is the University of Science and Arts in Chickasaw, Oklahoma. Competing here, yes, it is. The 800 meter, also uh, difficulty level of this. Absolutely, I've had my fair share in 800s, <laughs> forced by my coaches, and I will say I did not appreciate them. <laughs> but they definitely made me a better 400 runner. <laughs> you, you do not want to uh, compete in 800. Is that what you're saying? And Absolutely not. <laughs> I will for the team, but other than that, no. It's fun, though. I mean, but it's the 800 is becoming, in the track and field world, it's becoming one of the hardest races to run. It's become super competitive. Normally, an 800, it's kind of like not too fast, but not too slow. A good mix between, like, the mid-distance, distance area. But nowadays, you see a lot of girls, well, for instance, girls, running, like, 201s and 203s, 209s, stuff like that. That's not easy to do. Basically a 100, I mean a one minute lap pace. So, oh, and it looks like. It was a pacer. Absolutely, it looks like, yeah, she was a rabbit for this um, athlete running now to probably to just get her on pace to run a fast 800 time that she wants. And again, the uh, young lady out of the University of Science and Arts in Oklahoma. And that is, I believe an NAIA school. Some of their athletes here competing at the Shocker Open. And that is Sharon Jabet running now by herself as her teammate was pacing her on the first lap, dropped off. And there she is on uh, making the final turns here, this final lap of the 800. Men's 800 meters coming up next. Looks like she has a lot of energy coming off this last curve, entering the last straight of the race. University of Science and Arts, the Drovers as their mascot out of the Sooner Athletic League in Oklahoma. And she's coming down with a strong finish, charging to the finish line in the last 50 meters. And you see her time on the right, and Sharon Jabet with the finish. Again, I would be... Uh, on the ground after running two laps, if I even could do it. And Absolutely. She's just smiling. I know. <laughs> Time there, 236.11 for uh, Sharon Jabet. And her time coming in to this was 240. So good, good run for her. Mm -hmm. Good race. As now we go to the men's 800. And uh, we have some high school athletes involved here. May Sal? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> a lot of the distance guys, they like to 
sport their old ah, I got you. high school jerseys because they're unattached, and they all come in their different See, I learn something new every time I'm up here. <laughs> 800 for men has become super competitive and super fun to watch over the last few years as well. Now let's see here who we have. Uh, one, two, three. We have seven out there at nine on the schedule. And uh, from Connor Stein from Wichita State. He comes in with the best time at 154.64. And Jason Landon, also from Wichita State. Unattached is Bryce Merriman from Wichita State. Josh Cable, unattached, also from Wichita State. Jack Lowry, another unattached Wichita Stater. And uh, Jacob Schartz from Hutchinson Community College, Blue Dragons. He's in lane five there in the red. And we also have, we have three uh, racers runners scheduled from Science and Arts, but only one out there. I believe that's going to be Marlon Herrera from uh, Science and Arts. That's Bryce Merriman in the uh, wearing his high school colors, I believe. Connor Stein, the senior, being introduced. So we can listen in. John Weiss doing the honors. Back in the cross country season, all the distance runners was sporting the fancy mustache <laughs> as their way of like, I don't know, like the joke. show of solidarity, maybe. Yeah. Like it was like a big joke in cross country that they all wore, like they all grew their mustaches out. And so they all looked like old men <laughs> at <laughs> practice. But it looks like a few of them kept the mustache. And we're off and running the men's 800 meters. And Connor Stein and Lane one on the inside. As they come on to the back straight away and even out. Marlon Herrera in the early lead from uh, Science and Arts. I believe that's Marlon Herrera. And of course the 800, we're talking about pacing in the 400, 800. There is, I assume, much more pacing early. Mm-hmm. Well, we saw in the women that actually had a pacer with uh, the young lady. Right. Looks like what they're doing now is they're transitioning into their last um, lane. I meant not lane. Last lap. There's the bell. The bell lap. One lap to go. Picking it up a little bit. Yeah, picking up the pace just a little bit. This is where it becomes more of a sprint. Um, where does the sprint yeah. start on the last no, I think with 800, um, a lot of runners tend to start start picking up their pace on the last lap. They kind of um, preserve a little bit of their energy in the first lap, just trying to um, go ahead and uh, get a position in on the race. But now in the second lap, they are normally getting ready to start upping up the volume and their pace a little bit, getting in position to finish strong. Connor Stein in the lead coming around toward the final turn. A couple weeks ago at the KT Woodman on that back straightaway, there was a strong headwind coming out of the north. Wind really not a factor here today. Connor Stein. Looks like Jason Landon is coming up on the side as well, competing strong to finish. And that is Jason Linden. Takes the lead. Jason Landon and uh, wins that. And almost came out of nowhere there with a time of 156.31. Edging out Connor Stein. Bryce Merriman finishes third. Running unattached for Wichita State. Josh Cable. Jack Lowry. Man Jacob Schartz from Hutchinson. 
as here we see it. Connor Stein was in the lead. And then what happened? Looks like Jason Lennon kind of started to position himself outside of the runners to come through and like across from them and then start his attack towards the finish. Kind of get around the athletes that are kind of like in the inner lanes. Good race for Jason Landon as he uh, with a strong finish to win the men's 800 meters. And fun fact, his brother is on his team. Corey Landon is his brother. Fun fact for everyone. <laughs> I just learned that a few months ago. Well, you didn't know that. I didn't know because I looked at them and I was like, man, they kind of look the same. And then I just asked the question and they both kind of looked at me and just started laughing. So I already, like, already knew that they were brothers. <laughs> Well, again, we've just completed the 800 meters for the men and the women. And uh, coming up next, uh, more running events. We're going to have the 400-meter hurdles. As, again, Jason Landon, there he is, just won the 800 meters with a strong finish. We're going to be back with more track and field action. The Shocker Open at Wichita State. We'll be back right after this. On this episode of In Focus, we highlight one human resources student who is working on her professional edge and is now passing her business skills on to local high school students. Plus, we take a look at the WSU Center for Real Estate, one of the premier sources for reliable data and expert analysis of real estate markets in Kansas. Check out the whole episode on YouTube. And back at Cessna Stadium at Wichita State's the Shocker Open is, uh, as we continue the track and field competition, the season, regular season finale for the Shockers. And women's pole vault is just wrapped up. Let's go down to Jenny Pinkston, who is with Elisa Fry. I'm here with Elisa Fry from Brooksville, Missouri. She's a pole vaulter. So, Elisa, what is your favorite memory? Uh, favorite memory would probably be uh, sophomore year winning the championship in the pole vault. And what are your plans after graduation? Um, well, I don't really have a lot of plans except for the gym that we're getting ready to open up, uh, pole vault club here in Wichita, first one to come to Wichita. So me and a former teammate doing that. So where can they find more information about that? Shameless plug. <laughs> um, you can go to our Instagram, I think, and then Facebook as well. Um, Wichita Vault Academy is what it's called. All right, awesome. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Jenny, and thank you, Elisa Fry from Brookfield, Missouri, another senior competing in Wichita State, pole vaulter. Wow, opening up a, a gym to teach pole vaulting. I might have to check that out. As uh, <laughs> Let's see how the uh, final results went to, the, to this evening or this afternoon for the pole vault. So as we check out, well, there's the men continuing. Now this is a replay of uh, the men's pole vaulting as it is now complete. Looks like a nice clearance from Slade Little. As we will check the, oh, there's Alicia. Well, that looks strong. And she wears the, the glasses. Yeah, Alisa, that's like her trademark is the glasses and the bun. And the final results, and Alicia Fry is your winner, the senior. 11, 10, 7, 5. Emily Gardner from Wichita State. Lisa Wheeler. Alyssa Wheeler. Alyssa mm -hmm. Wheeler, uh, Margot Thompson. Again, Wichita State. So we see the uh, results there of the women's pole vault. And on the men's side, it is Hayden Bugner, another senior, wins the uh, pole vault event, 16 three and a half. 
Tate McDonald, the freshman finishing second for Wichita State. Chris Peters, the Shocker Track Club, comes in third, 15-3 and 7-5. Uh, ben Johnson finishes fourth, the uh, senior decathlete for Wichita State. The jack of all trades for the Shockers. As uh, go down the list there, Davis Dubert down at 11th place. We've seen some, several highlights of him. But again, we just heard from Elisa Fry, who just wrapped up. I thought that was interesting, though. She's going to open up a, a gym that specializes in coaching pole vault. Yeah, I think that's, that's super I, awesome. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, especially for Wichita, because I know a lot of Is people it? actually do it. And that looks like Caden Griffin throwing the javelin just now. Again, the field events still continuing as uh, we get ready for more running events. And coming up will be the 400-meter hurdles, the women first. As they're setting up the track, it looks like the hurdles are in place as we're getting ready. Athletes are down on the track here, getting ready in their starting blocks. Now, you have done the 400-meter hurdles. Yeah, not collegiately, but at practice, I was kind of wanting to get into it a little bit, but I was doing it, getting better, but I slightly injured myself slightly. So I was like, ah probably give it a rest a little bit and then pick it up during the summer. It's pretty hard, though. Like, I think it's probably the scariest event for me personally. It's just running the 400 isn't that bad, but when you're putting hurdles around it, it's a little bit tougher. It takes a lot of more energy out of you. So I always commend 400 hurdlers because I feel like that is definitely top three hardest event in track and field to do. Again, the women's 400, we're going to have four athletes competing. Anisha Cole, Claudia Rojo, Alexi Watley, and Abby Schmarsh. Claudia Rojo, we saw her win the 100-meter hurdles. She has the best time coming into this race at In one lap around, and I believe nine obstacles to <coughs> confront. Ten hurdles. Ten hurdles. Mm -hmm. As they uh, come out of that first turn. Looks like they're all pretty even so far coming off the second hurdle, entering the third. Claudia Rojo, right there in the middle, the second from your right, coming right at us. On her left. Rojo and Watley head to head. Now Rojo t makes the pass as they come around to the final turn. Yes, you can always kind of indicate who's leading the race by seeing who jumps over the hurdle first. But it looks like Anisia Cole is also coming up, looking like she's having a strong finish as well. Continuing yeah, and Cole's the coming up three. on the left side there. Claudia Rojo, who looks like she might be fading a bit. One more hurdle to go, and now down to the wire. And is Cole coming up on the outside or inside, I should say. And I think uh, Rojo, Rojo held her off to win that. Yes, definitely a PR, I believe, for Nisia Cole so far. I think. By the way, Claudia has her left ankle tape pretty heavy. Is that something new? Or no. Claudia does win this uh, race 1 4 3, and Cole 1 4 8. So Big PR for close. Nisia Cole. Um, I think her previous PR was like. 101. That's Anisia Cole on your right, far right side of your screen. Right. Claudia. She, Claudia looks like she might have been struggling a little bit. Just maybe by a little facial bit. Expression. Might have been like the wind or something. Yeah. But um, I'm pretty sure there's a big PR for um, Anisia Cole. I think this is her yeah, she's first happy. time going. <laughs> yeah, a minute so far this year, yeah. which is good for her. And it looked like Alexi had a great race as well. It's so 48, I believe. 48. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 4 3 was. Uh, Claudia, so she's very happy of yeah. that, uh, that finish. That's terrific to see. This meet is known for people to have really good performances, so that's really good, especially them running really fast, which means they're on track for a really good performance at conference next weekend, which is what counts. And yeah, we got the men's 400 meters uh, hurdles coming up next. Uh, getting ready for that. I think they've already got the hurdles in place set up. A little, a little bit higher than the women. Yes. And on the schedule, we've got uh, two Wichita State runners. 
Adam Mudge, who we heard about earlier in the his sardines sardine situation. <laughs> yeah, Adam uh, comes in with a time of 56.38. But the best time is Austin Corley. He's at 50.07. Sam Bird from Hendricks will be competing. Second athlete we've seen from Hendricks. And Siobhan Blair, another uh, University of Science and Arts athlete, also be competing. And now Noah Smucker is on the list, but he was scheduled to run the 100 uh, me or 110 meters and uh, was not. I don't think he. I don't think we saw him run. I don't yeah, think I don't he think up. he is actually here. So we're going to cross him off and uh, leaves us with four athletes competing here in the 400 <laughs> meter hurdles. And you're watching the Shocker Open, the regular season finale for Wichita State track and field. You talked about the American Conference uh, tr coming here next week, the conference meet. It, it, it's great to be home. You know, you're going to be mm -hmm. close. Now, I've talked, Ben Johnson, for instance, he says he kind of likes going away. I, he, too, he says personally. says it kind of helps him focus. I, I have to agree with Ben. I uh, I don't like it because that you travel and it kind of like makes you tired. But I definitely like going to different places and seeing their city a little bit, kind of seeing what their town has to offer, and just also running on a different track. But also because we're running on our track, we have a little bit of an advantage as far as the wind goes. Like Wichita has pretty bad wind, not gonna lie. But at least <laughs> because we practice we know every that. day, yeah. <laughs> We're kind of used to like where it is, and we've been able to hit it on both sides of the track and stuff like that. You know, you talk about traveling. Is there a place you you had the opportunity to go and compete that's a favorite? Well, <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I registered last year, so I didn't get to go to Cincinnati. But um, Birmingham is kind of fun, and we're super excited for next year when we go to Florida. Ah, so we take another look at some of the field events. This is a javelin. Corey Martin. Looks like Jeff Oss just ah. threw that. Looked pretty far, too. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what the distance. We'll have the final results come a little bit later as they continue the competition. And that was Oss. As we're getting ready for the 400 hurdles. Again, Adam Mudge, Austin Corley, Sam Bird, Siobhan Blair. Again, Sam Bird from Hendricks, Siobhan Blair from the University of Science and Arts. There's the young man from Hendricks, Sam Bird. We check that lineup again. And uh, Noah Smucker on the schedule, but uh, not on the track, I believe. Yeah, he may actually. Now we, <laughs> now we do have five athletes. Oh, maybe he just needed extra energy for this 400 <laughs> hurdles, which I yeah, understand. He was scheduled to do the 110 hurdles and did not, so. Again, following the 400-meter hurdles, so we'll go to the 200 meters, uh, women and men. And uh, then the 1,500 meters. That's, uh, and then our competition will be capped off tonight by the 4x400 relay. Men only, though. Men only. No women tonight. In lane 4 will be Austin Corley. Corley that best time coming in, 50.07. By the way, Hendricks College, give you a little insight to Hendricks. That's a college out of Conway, Arkansas. Got a few athletes, a couple athletes competing, men and women here today in the Shocker Open. So they are getting set to go here for the 400-meter hurdles, men side of the track and keep an eye on Austin Corley lane four Wichita State and that's Adam Mudge in lane three shockers and they are off
Looks like Corley's already breaking the stagger oh, off the is. first um, hurdle, entering the third hurdle right now. I said Corley as we check out the uh, far side. He's starting to gain and uh, who's in the second place and probably make his move here around the final turns as he now is in first. Absolutely. Looking smooth as he leaps over those hurdles. This is definitely wow. his main event. He is really stretching he, the advantage here. Absolutely. He always looks so smooth and so strong going wow. through the hurdles. Austin Corley, the big lead coming down the final stretch. One more hurdle to go. Oh, he's running great right now. And he's trying to best his time of 50. 07, not quite sure he got that, but boy. It was still a good run, though. Yeah, 59-8 for Austin Corley. Sam Bird from Hendricks finishes second. Adam Mudge from Wichita State in third, 55.59. And Siobhan Blair. And right here is where he made his move. Going into the final turns, Austin Corley. And he, he runs well. He gains a lot just by running, but he also gains with the big leaps. Absolutely. So very smooth going over those hurdles. It's interesting to watch the hurdles. Some, some people, they kind of lose ground when they're running, and mm -hmm. then they gain it back yeah. on the jumps. Yeah, I learned with the 400, it's a really good um, advantage if you're able to um, be quick within your steps of the hurdles because sometimes you don't necessarily have to have the best form to hurdle, but if you can – hurdle decently and then be able to be quick through your steps into the next hurdle that normally is what people have um, that gets them further along in the race. See Rainbow over there to talk to Austin Corley after his race and back to the javelin. Looks like Jeff Oss ready to throw a big throw Jeff in the Oss javelin. Flying through the air. See if we can pick up a distance on that one. Let's see. We're going to take a look at his approach here. Jeff Ost. Ost certainly timing strength. So many events in track and field involved. He's got to release that at just the right time. A little stutter step there at the end. And then the, the push. The push is essential to a good job. All right, so just here we got about 10 minutes until our next running event. As, uh, we'll be going to the uh, 200 meters, the women, first. And you're watching the Shocker Open at Wichita State, Cessna Stadium, the mecca of track and field in the state of Kansas. Skyla White, yes. as we're <laughs> discussing uh, in our ears here, by the way, of, about the triple, women's triple jump, as we're going to show some highlights of that and or some results, as we saw earlier today. Again, the field events. And there's the uh, finish, the freshman. And then uh, Skyla White in second, but she had a, a PR, and she was extremely uh, happy about that, that 40 uh, Eight and a quarter, and there it is. Uh, let's watch this. Again, the triple jump, another event. So much timing and precision involved. Yeah, definitely important to have really good phases, so one, two, and third phase with a nice finish swoop, as we she, like to say it. I think so she whoop. knew right away that she had done something pretty good. Absolutely. All right, Hayden Bugner. We're going to hear from him. Let's go down to Jenny Pinkston. Jenny? I'm here with Hayden Bugner, a pole vaulter from Andale, Kansas. What's your favorite part about being a Shocker athlete? Uh, definitely the atmosphere. Uh, we've got a great group, group of guys and girls, and I love coming to practice every day and traveling around the country. It's been great. Sounds good. Um, oh, yeah. What kind of things are you doing to prepare for the AAC championship next weekend? Uh, obviously at practice every week we're uh, working towards higher bars and uh, every meet we're rehearsing um, 
like a conference meet. So. Sounds good. Well, we're look, looking forward to seeing you vault. Back to you guys. All right, Jenny, thank you. And thank you, Hayden Bugner. And there he is again. We saw him win the uh, pole vault earlier or saw his results. And that's that uh, picture that I'm just amazed of. <laughs> he's like he's celebrating in midair. Young man from Andell, Kansas. Another outstanding track and field program. They, they grow them pretty well out there in western Sedgwick County. And we got Andell and Cheney. They really produce a lot of good track and field athletes who have all come, not all, but a lot of them have come to Wichita State and done very well for the Shockers. As Wichita State, the hurdles coming off the track. We're going to get ready for some more running events. We'll be back with more track and field competition from Cessna Stadium right after this. On this episode of In Focus, we highlight one human resources student who is working on her professional edge and is now passing her business skills on to local high school students. Plus, we take a look at the WSU Center for Real Estate, one of the premier sources for reliable data and expert analysis of real estate markets in Kansas. Check out the whole episode on YouTube. And back on the campus of Wichita State, Cessna Stadium. It's the Shocker Open. I'm Leon Lebo along with Daisha Bullocks. Bullocks. Bullocks, <laughs> yes. You're S doing on great. the end. <laughs> the junior, Wichita State Shocker. And not besides track and field, though, you're, you're interested in what we're doing right now. You want to be a broadcaster. Absolutely. Um, I think ever since, like, middle school, I've kind of always admired people like the sideline reporters and stuff like that. So in high school, they let me call a few, like, teacher versus student games, and then um, that's just where my love just continued to grow into college. Continue to watch some of the field events as the men's javelin continues. Young man there from Hendricks College. And we are going to go back down on the field for another interview. I understand we have another senior, Connor Stein. Let's go down. I'm here with Connor Stein, a mid-distance runner here at Wichita State. So, Connor, what's one of your favorite track and field memories? Um, DMRs are always my favorite. Uh, being on the school record down in Arkansas a couple years ago was pretty cool. This year's conference DMR was pretty fun, too, seeing Jason go down. But we came back and got some points that we needed, so that was, that was awesome. Very cool. And do you have any plans after you graduate? Uh, I've interviewed for dental school. I haven't heard back yet. Uh, so... We'll see, but worst case scenario, I might be moving back home and try again next year. Sounds good. And are you going to be competing any um, post-collegiately? Probably not, seriously. Uh, I love the sport, so I wouldn't be surprised if I get, to get in some stuff for fun, but yeah. Maybe some inner squad meets. Yeah, yeah gray squad. Oh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> All right, back to you guys. All right, thank you again, Jenny and Connor Stein. There he is from Danvers, Illinois, near the Bloomington, Illinois area. And uh, wants to be a dentist, pull some teeth. Huh? And uh, we saw the mustache there. That was part of the, uh, you told me that was cross country? Yeah. The con yeah, that's a cross country thing for sure. That's just like, I feel like every year they kind of pick like one thing they all want to do as far as like clothing or something like that. And I guess this year was the year for the mustaches. Is that how you say mustaches or, mu oh, the, the mustaches? <laughs> And coming up here is the women's 200 meters is coming up next. And, uh, well, the men as well after that. Bit of a lull in the action here. The Shocker Open. Talked about you want to be in the sports broadcaster. Did you have somebody watching that you were? 
yes. idolized as a kid? Or Yeah, I really like um, Holly. Jeff she, Host again? Holly, she does like a lot of that. Holly NBA. Rowe from ESPN? Absolutely. Yes. She's like my favorite. But I've also um, gotten into Maria Taylor. She's been like someone that I look up to the most. So just seeing like just the fact that women are able to take on those roles and just be respected in the industry is something that I look forward to hopefully getting my foot in the door for stuff like that. Well, terrific. And you also you're looking forward to uh, getting a master's degree in sports management. Yeah, so I'm getting an undergraduate degree in uh, journalism, and so I felt like a way to kind of tie in sports a little bit is sports management. And since we have, like, one of the top sports management um, schools in the country, I figured why not um, just go ahead and take advantage of my fifth Here, year, next year event on the track. and um, try and get my master's done. That is a great idea, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, journalism and uh, – it's, it's a bit of a volatile industry, and uh, it's always great to have something to fall back on and uh, continue your interest in sports. As you're going to see a, a lineup of six Wichita State Shockers getting ready for the 200 meters. And there they are. It's uh, Romero, Milligan, Kiros, Wilson, Garcia, Prather, and Henry. Paula Garcia not running. 200. Let's go to John Weiss, who's giving us a rundown of all these competitors. 56.86 in the 400. And 217 in the 800. In lane six, this is senior from Penny, Missouri, Morgan Prather. And again, that's Morgan Prather rounding out the field here. All Wichita State Shockers. Morgan of a time of 26.5 coming into this. Sydney Wilson, 25.45. So she'll have the best time of this group, I believe. Check that. It'll be Paula Garcia at 23.66. And they are off. Yeah, Paula Garcia, lane four. And it's a mad dash. Looks like she's going for a fast time. Whoa. Solid, solid 24 for her, which is really good. She's been running consistent um, these last few meets, really getting to where she wants to be on the track and just preparing herself for outdoor conference. Um, she had a really big PR at the KU Relays, running 23 mid, I believe. So it's going pretty good for her so far this season. Mary see at the time, Paula Garcia, 24.01. Kiros, 25.89. Sydney Wilson finishes third, 25. 9-1, the women's 200 meters as we see them coming out of the blocks. Good start here. As yes, Paula Garcia quickly out of those blocks. Yeah, it looked like she had a really good start off the curb, but then she just continued to accelerate, um, accelerate down the track. All right, get ready now for the men's uh, 200 meters. And we'll see, it looks like we're going to have a full complement of eight runners on the schedule. As we run down, Dominique Artis from the Shocker Track Club, Caden Griffin from Wichita State, Shakoy Stevens running unattached, Jace Kopic, Wichita State, Richard Sandifer from Wichita State, Noah Smucker, Kansas City Smoke Track Club, Lucas Schaefer from Wichita State, and another Shocker, Grant Downs. Dominique Artis, is that Artis, is uh, 21 even, has the best time coming in this. Again, we have eight scheduled. Three guys out there right now. 
as we are once again getting ready for the 200 men's. And to uh, give you an update on our schedule this evening, following the 200, we'll have the 1,500 men and women, and then followed by the 4 by 400 relay for the men. As there's our schedule of events, there you see it. Uh, so we're down to the 650 mark. So we're a few minutes away from that. There's Steve Rainbolt. Always making the rounds after every event, talking to the athletes. He's become kind of a legend here at Wichita State, now in his 19th year. It's gone by fast. Coach Ball is a really funny person. Great guy to interview. We'll see oh, that. yes. <laughs> he will give you all the content you need. Trust <laughs> and believe. He's ready to go. A product of Shawnee Mission East High School. But just got done finished throwing the javelin. So we're going to not run the 200 today. But this athlete is from Wichita, Kansas. Two times an all-conference athlete and scored 16 times during his career in conference competition. He has personal records of 21-57 in the 200, 47-88 in the 400, 24-5 in the long jump, 49-7 and three quarters in the triple jump, 179-11 in the javelin, and the heptathlon 5,059, and then the decathlon 6,851. And he's on the number three all-time ranked 4x4 four four indoor time indoor team in school history. Is a senior from Wichita South High School, Caden Griffin. So Caden Griffin will not be running in the 200 after just competing in the javelin, but uh, the senior honored his gift basket. Young man again from Wichita South. Wichita South Titan. And it sounds like we're not going to have a full compliment. Of course, Caden Griffin not. Lucas Schaefer will be running. Dominic Artis. Okay, Grant Downs says uh, we will just have four runners. Grant Downs on the outside. So scheduled full complement of eight. We cut that in half. Three Wichita State Shockers and then uh, Dominique Artis from the Shocker Track Club. In lane two. Starting on the far turn here at Cessna Stadium as they come around down to or toward the final turn and the final stretch. Look like it's Richard, Jennifer, and um, lane two artists kind of battling out in the last 50 meters. And here they come and uh, Richard Sandifer I think edged Dominic Artist for the win. And that was a good one. Close finish at the end. That was Richard Sandifer, 22-7. Yep, nice. The artist uh, coming in second, 22-7-6. Wow, that was close. Yeah, let's check the uh, replay on this, see exactly uh, where the, the move was made. What do you see here? Um, looks like um, they both got out pretty well entering into the um, straightaway. Looks like... Um, Coming off the curb, it looks like they're pretty even, but I see Richard kind of towards the last 50 meters, kind of like barely just um, edging out. Looked like he really got an advantage on that turn. He had a nice turn there and mm -hmm. picked up a few extra feet, I should say, or in inches. Yeah. Because <laughs> he just edged uh, artists at the finish, and that's going to wrap up the men's 200 meters. And coming up next will be well, a little more long distance as we go to the 1,500 meters. And as we get ready for the 1500, men and women, we're going to take a bit of a break. We'll be back with more from Wichita State right after this. What do you see here?
On this episode of In Focus, we highlight one human resources student who is working on her professional edge and is now passing her business skills on to local high school students. Plus, we take a look at the WSU Center for Real Estate, one of the premier sources for reliable data and expert analysis of real estate markets in Kansas. Check out the whole episode on YouTube. Cessna Stadium, Wichita State, the Shocker opened as uh, we're wrapping up competition on this Friday evening. I'm Leon Liebel along with Daisha Bullocks as we've been bringing you some of the competition on this, well, what is senior day, honoring the 18 seniors finishing up their track and field career here at Wichita State. And that included all the uh, field events that took place throughout the afternoon. And that includes the women's javelin and Andrea Navarro, a senior, goes out a winner, Wichita State. Her throw of 139, nine inches. Jessica Gardner from Wichita State finishes second. And then Haley uh, Brown in third, a freshman shocker. And on the men's side, we saw a lot of Jeff Ost earlier, some of his highlights. And they look like good throws. I guess they were. As uh, he wins it going away, 203 feet, eight inches. Giles Fox competing unattached in second. And then Caden Griffin, who we just saw honored as uh, the senior, outgoing senior from Wichita State, and Marshall Nickel uh, finishes fourth there. So you see uh, the Shockers uh, athletes and fans and parents and supporters, all coaches, getting ready to, to wrap up this regular season finale and then get ready for next weekend when the American Conference comes to town. And that'll be an exciting event as we'll have all three days of activity in competition starting on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There it is, May 10th through the 12th here at Cessna Stadium. Wichita State, brand new track here too this year. Yeah, um, kudos for us hosting because we got a lot of new stuff. We got a brand new track and we got an awesome new, um, I don't know what it's called, like a billboard or something like that, a jumbotron. That we a video board? Yeah. Video board, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yes. Um, we got a brand new video board that actually shows visual mm -hmm. which is super awesome and we got some new uniforms too well terrific yeah i mean i think we low-key had them last year but now that everyone's back it just we got some new stuff again we're getting ready for the uh, women's 1500 meters coming up and uh looks like we're a few minutes away from that And while we wait for the start of the women's 1500, let's uh, take a break. We'll be back with more from Cessna Stadium right after this. The Shocker Open here at Cessna Stadium at Wichita State. Let's go down to the field for an interview. We got Skylar Arneson doing the honors. Skylar. Hi there. 
So I'm with Andy Navarro. Andy, you've been to multiple conference championships. What is your favorite memory? All the conferences really came, kind of came in together. Uh, I don't remember much about them besides the food, specifically in Terre Haute. Alex Adams and I walked a couple miles to this Chinese place, and it was the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty good. Now, as throwers, there are a lot of theological questions that plague us. So we have to know, Theologic. what's your favorite Skittle? <laughs> it used to be the green one, but they changed that from lime to green apples. So now it's red. Very good to know. Back to you guys. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Skyler. Andrea Navarro, a hometown athlete from Wichita East High School, Blue Ace, and a senior. And uh, I think she said Terre Haute, Terre Haute, <laughs> Indiana. There's, uh, they have good Chinese food, I guess. I, I guess so. I've eaten at a Cracker Barrel in Terre Haute, by the way, just a little trivia. A long road trip once, but uh, <laughs> that's, that's my only experience in uh, Terre Haute, Indiana as uh, we get ready to wrap up the competition here at the Shocker Open on this Friday afternoon, Friday evening at Wichita State. And we are scheduled to have the 1,500 meters women and men. Now, on the schedule, we only have one competitor on the women's side, so let's, I'm not sure if we've, uh, we're going to see that or not. That would be Marina at Goncalves, uh, running unattached, is on the schedule, but... Uh, and that is scheduled for 7 o'clock straight up. And we are up and running. Well, I guess it's going with the men's. Well, we're just going to the men's. No women's. And it's also going to be a solo. So just uh, one. Joseph Savente. Joseph Savente. Running by himself in the Shocker Track Club. He comes in at a time of 4 17 6 9. So sit back and relax, and we'll watch Joseph run around the track a few times. This, Daisha, I talked to you about uh, your expertise on the sprints and the hurdles and things. This is uh, neither one of us want to do. <laughs> Fun fact when I first started running track when I was four years old, my first two events were the 800 and the 1500. Oh, wow. So you do have a little experience. Yeah, I long, didn't even long. Yeah, I didn't even start running the 400 until I believe my 8th grade year in middle school. Now, did you do, uh, compete in other athletics, other sports? Yes, I was a three-sport athlete in high school. I did um, volleyball, basketball, and track. And then I did gymnastics when I was little and I did dance and cheer. So, yes. Basketball, you were a guard? I was. I was, okay, you guys, you're not going to believe this, but I was actually really good at basketball. My freshman year, I was on the JV team, and I was, like, one of two freshmen that were on the JV team, and then I got moved up to the, what's it, the varsity my uh, for playoffs, and I actually played, like, the last two minutes of the game, but it doesn't matter because I still played um, the last two minutes, and... <laughs> Yeah, I did AU basketball um, every other summer. My dad didn't want me to get too burnt out in track, so I kind of alternated a little bit. And I think I did gymnastics for about two years, I think when I was six and seven. And you have a brother. I do. Yeah, he competes too? No, he's in the Army. I mean, he did sports, though. He, yeah. he was a three-sport athlete as well. He did football, basketball, and um, track. He did high, uh, high jump. So athletic family overall? Mom, dad, too? Or? Um, my dad, yeah. My dad, he's from Topeka, Kansas. He actually won oh, state. So some, you do something about Kansas. Yeah, a little bit. A little <laughs> bit. He won state in high jump. He went to Highland Park. I don't know a year because I'm just not that sure. So he was a Scotty. Highland yeah. Park Scotty. Yeah, he went to Highland Park, and he, he did football, basketball, and uh, he won state in high jump. And my brother, he was really good at high jump as well. So your dad actually competed here at Cessna Stadium. Probably. Oh, yeah, he did. The state track and field always. Yeah, of course, yeah. So, wow. Yeah, he, I, I guess Wichita State was different back in the day. That's what he tells me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, and then my mom, she didn't do sports, but she's super, um, she's super, like, smart. She's really intelligent. She's really good with, like, her academics and stuff like that. And she's really good with, like, designs and stuff like that. She loves to. Um, do interior designing or party planning and stuff like that. 
Joseph Silvente running unattached and running by himself. The 1,500 meter men at the Shocker Open. Be a lonely feeling out there as he's all by himself. And, uh, we're watching him. It looks like he's on his last lap, though. So the that's bell, good. Yeah, the bell has rung. So he's on the back straightaway. So you see his time, just a little under four minutes right now as he approaches the final turns. Well, that's great. Uh, interesting that your dad won the state track, the state high jump, and uh, did it right here. Yeah, and then he went to play college football. He went to um, Butler for two years, and then he transferred to Northern Iowa where he played there for three years. Northern Iowa, the uh, Kurt Warner was the quarterback, Hall of Fame quarterback. Mm -hmm. I don't think he played with him, but... <laughs> But he, yeah, he went for like three years and he kind of, we're kind of following, I'm kind of following his steps a little bit. Joseph Savante, I said on a task, Shocker Track Club, 429.9 as he finishes up the 1500 meters, the lone competitor in the 1500 and still by himself out there. The lone survivor. <laughs> walking, walking away. And so that leaves us with one more event to go and that will be the four by 400 men's relay. And uh, Shocker's getting ready to bend Johnson down there with the baton. Hey, let's go down to uh, Jenny. She's got Caden Griffin uh, for an interview. Jenny. I'm here with Caden Griffin from Wichita. So what events are you planning on doing next weekend for the AAC championship meet? I plan on doing long jump, triple jump, possibly javelin, and a member of the 4x4 team. Do you have a favorite memory um, from the track and field career? My favorite memory from track would be running the Shocker Open 200 meters two years ago. Was it a PR? It was because it was my first ever 200. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, back to you guys. All right, Jenny, thank you. And there he is, Caden Griffin, the young man from Wichita South, hometown athlete. Good, good look at him over the jumping over that hurdle. Also through the javelins, we heard, and finishing up his career here at Wichita State. Still, though, much more competition to go. We mentioned repeatedly the uh, American Conference meet next week. There's Ben Johnson getting ready for the uh, four by 400 relay. We heard from Ben earlier. He's got his uh, future mapped out. I think this 4x4 should be very interesting. I think it's going to be a number, a plethora of different combinations of athletes. So sprinters, looks like there's some pole vaulters in there. So it should truly be a sight to see. None other, none like it for sure. Getting the starting blocks. Looks like there's some distant runners out there, too. Can this be our final event of the day at the Shocker Open? Can I mention this? Uh, it's all about competition today, but it's also a lot about ceremony and honoring the uh, seniors, the nine women, the nine men, Wichita State track and field athletes as they uh, finish up there. And I was wondering about that. I just got word that this is not going to be a, a relay. It's going to be a 400-meter dash. So... Didn't think we had enough out there for a, for a relay. Let's see if we can get the lineup here for you on this. It's kind of uh, we're bouncing around a little bit here, improvising as we wrap this up. Uh, 
All right, we're going to hear from another senior, Tangi Wiseman, and Jenny Pinkston has that interview. Jenny. I'm here with Tangi Wiseman from Algona, Iowa. She's a distance runner here on the Wichita State track team. What is your one of your favorite memories from being a track athlete here? I don't really have a favorite because every day has like good stuff in it for sure. But an uh, interesting memory was running a long run at an airport with my buddies and some of the cops came and pulled us all over and told us to stop. <laughs> and so we just went to a parking lot and finished instead. <laughs> That's cool. Um, and do you have any plans after graduation? Yeah, I'm going to move to Washington, D.C. and work for the Forest Service. And do you plan on running any um, after you graduate? I'll probably hit the roads and do some 5Ks. I love, like, road races like that. I think they're a good atmosphere. So I'll continue to run like that. Very cool. All right, back to you guys. All right, thank you, Jenny. And how about that? Tangie Wiseman on her way to Washington, D.C. to work for the Forestry Department from Algona, Kansas. Is that supposed to be going to Iowa? <laughs> but uh, Tangie Wiseman, uh, I, li I like these uh, stories, of their favorite memories, and running at an airport and getting pulled over by security. That's, that's a good one. There's Ben Johnson. He knows where the cameras are. So he'll be in uh, lane five starting this 400-meter dash, not a uh, relay. Should be kind of fun to watch. As again, we'll get the, the lineup for you completed. Five athletes competing. Which should be our final event of the day here at the Shocker Open at Cessna Stadium. Three of our runners out of the blocks, two. Electing not to go out of the blocks, and the, they're off and running. A 400-meter dash for the men. Ben Johnson on that outside with the early lead, but they'll fall back into place on that back straight. One lap on the 400 meters. Again, five athletes. Ben Johnson in the uh, lead here in Noah. No 4x400 four relay. We're just doing the 400-meter dash. As uh, Ben Johnson's been holding on to that lead the whole way, but it's getting close now. There goes Jason Landon. Looks like they're doing a workout probably. <laughs> Jason Landon, who we saw earlier. Shout out has, to. Has the big strong finishes. And, yeah. Whew, look at that. Shout out to Slate, though. He's the lone pole vaulter in the group. Shout out to him. Wow. And they all come across in pretty good shape. As that is your finish. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's watch this uh, replay coming around the corner here, I think. Ben Johnson, he led the whole way, but here's the, uh, the move. The distance runner comes and gets him at the end. Good effort, though, for sure. How about... And the young pole, the pole vaulter. That's a good, yeah, Slade. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on the inside. I wonder how much they had to convince him to run this. <laughs> and uh, getting some congratulations there. So again, wraps up the competition, and we're going to be uh, taking a break. We'll be back with more from Cessna Stadium right after this. On this episode of In Focus, we highlight one human resources student who is working on her professional edge and is now passing her business skills on to local high school students. Plus, we take a look at the WSU Center for Real Estate, one of the premier sources for reliable data and expert analysis of real estate markets in Kansas. 
Check out the whole episode on YouTube. And that's going to wrap up all the competition today here at the Shocker Open at Cessna Stadium. But Wichita State is, we honored the seniors, and congratulations to the 18 seniors, the nine men, nine women athletes who are wrapping up their career, but still plenty of more track and field to go as next week again the American Conference. I'm Leon Lebo along with Daisha Bullocks, and Daisha, it's been terrific working with you. Thank you for Be having me. Best of luck in uh, your athletic career and your broadcasting uh, endeavors as you uh, move on and you still got some time here next year you'll be a senior and you'll be honored i'll have two more years because oh, i'm right. registered but <laughs> right. yeah um thank you so much for having me it's been so much fun just talking about the athletes and just like you said earlier recognizing the seniors and stuff like that all right that's going to wrap it up for us here at cessna stadium the shocker open is complete Remember, next week is the American Conference Track and Field Meet here in Wichita State. That is going to be May 10th through the 12th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's going to do it for us and for Daisha Bullock's Jenny Pinkston, and Skylar Arneson, who are doing the interviews on the field. I'm Leon Liebel. Have a good night. Have a great weekend, everybody.